It's very important that you get all of the right gear right from the start so you can hunt and dive comfortably and effectively. Um, I did it the opposite. I started off in stubbies with a pig knife and I really struggled. This is because spearfishing gear is really subjective to your body shape, your face shape, um, weight requirements and you know blade stiffness requirements and also the species of fish that you're going to be targeting. So all masks are going to limit your peripheral vision to a certain extent. However, some masks are going to be better than others in this regard. Um, this may be a deciding factor for you. So pace to know that when we're hunting, we're continuously scanning our heads side to side. So peripheral vision is an inferior trait in a mask compared to fit and comfort. But it may be a deciding factor for you if uh, you've got you know three or four masks that fit really well and are comfortable. Remember the snorkel is out of the way and no longer in our mouths when we descend. So we want a snorkel that's light and streamlined if possible, um, not something. Open sound meaning that the neoprene rubber interior is the only thing in contact with your skin. And there's no... Um, she's going to get into her new uh, five millimeter suit and um, we're going to show you how to get in and out of a suit and then also um, aftercare. Okay, so you want to make sure that the suit is well lubricated with soapy water. So what we're doing here is making sure that the soapy water is all the way through the leg. She pulls the hood back because it's not necessary to have on at the moment. They do have a myriad of benefits. They'll protect your hands and fingers from coral, urchins, crayfish and lobster spines, jellyfish, fish spines to an extent, uh, fish gills which can be quite abrasive to skin. Uh, rope and reel line burns and they do add warmth, provide grip on pole spears and you know heaps of other things. My preference lately has been diving with lightweight protection when targeting our crayfish and lobster species as these animals have uh, forward facing sharp spines that penetrate skin easily. Another, apart from the obvious, you know, killing, bleeding and gutting fish, they can be used for other tasks like cutting tangled or caught line. Um, opening shells, uh, mussel shells, and urchins. They can be used for burying and you know specialized knives like and grab the belt, pull that out, and let it drop like that. And that should just release the belt right off and let it sink. Now that is really important if um, you know you want to get someone buoyant, get them to the surface in a hurry. You just have to remember that the heavier that you are, the more energy that you're going to exert trying to get off the bottom and back up into the positive buoyancy zone. Because propulsion is important when breath hold diving. Uh, you want a fin that will allow you to kick off the bottom or off the surface as efficiently as possible. So, you know, a short inefficient fin will cause you to kick a lot more. A good spear gun that is capable of tackling the species that you intend to target will help to prevent wounding and losing fish and will outlast the majority of your dive gear. There is so much information and debate around spear guns that I will deliberately keep this section as simple as possible. As the reality is that this, in this day and age, that the large gun brands in the market are incredibly effective at doing what they do and the majority of the work lies with the diver. I'm right-handed so what I do is um, I'm grabbing the underside band with my right hand, um, not underneath like this. I'm grabbing it top ways like this. So what I want to do is push the gun forward and then pull the gun around so that it's centered in the middle of my sternum. And then what I can do is, if I need to, I can use this hand here, pull down. This is the preferred setup for the majority of underwater hunters as it's simple and very effective. Uh, the alternative is a slip tip and it's more complicated and unnecessary in most scenarios. Uh, the less moving parts to fail in those crucial moments when you may be hunting, the better. The first being a float and a float line setup that connects to your gun and the second being a reel on the gun itself. Now I would highly recommend that anyone just starting out starts and that's when you want to have your buddy there and um, you know you're, when you're pushing your own limits is when you, um, you really want to be on the ball. So another option instead of having a float, uh, particularly while diving from the shore and sharky areas is a dive plat. Um, this is basically a small boat that can house your catch out of the water. Um, it's towed the same as a dive float, keeps your fish out of the water, and that can be quite a good idea in, in these circumstances. Um, pole spears, um, which is really, I'm um, having quite a lot of fun with them. Um, so with pole spears you can have, you know, uh, paralyzer tips which uh, basically splay, like a three-headed three paralyzer which splay and hold the fish that way. You can have prongs which hold on 
Um, you can also have a slip tip like what I'm running at the moment and also a normal flopper um, which quite a few guys have seen them being incredibly effective in blue water situations as well. Generally someone has to work a flasher if it's not the kind of flasher that's going to work well on its own and another diver has to be diving. So there's a bit of extra kit there and you can see um, Chris Coates he has a, a video there and he shows you guys how to make buzz bomb flashes. Now you make the flasher out of a uh, like an old wine sack, like what we call a goon sack. Thanks for joining me here on Vimeo On Demand.